examples, make up a single image, much as French surrealist George Seurat created impressionist paintings, dot by dot. Alterations to digital images generally take one of three forms, addition, subtraction, and manipulation. For example, enhancement or the merger of multiple images. Digital addition means adding something to a picture that wasn't already there, wasn't originally there, such as a crowd at a baseball stadium. Digital subtraction refers to deleting something from a picture, such as removing someone or something, like a cable supporting a character magically flying. Digital manipulation refers to transforming an image, such as making it lighter or darker, blending two things into one, or distorting one face into another, called a morph in the industry vernacular. While the telephone companies are leading the charge to create the information superhighway, multimedia producers are leading the race for content. The next graph presents, and in fact two graphs in your participant manual, lists the leading producers of multimedia software ranked by total revenues for 1993. Heading the list is Electronic Arts, broader bunk software, who in 1994 agreed to merge and thus formed the largest multimedia production company in the world. Broderbunt is well known for its highly popular education children's multimedia software, including Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? The ranking is likely to change soon as more mergers are announced. In fact, as I talk today, Pearson PLC, one of Britain's largest publishers, had recently announced it would pay $462 million to buy Software Toolkits, Inc., Sil Silicon Valley multimedia software company that successfully produced Star Wars characters and Marvel Comics Captain America and video games and many other personal computer programs. Others high on the list include Acclaim Entertainment, well known for its popular but controversial video game Mortal Kombat, and Microsoft Multimedia a division of Bill Gates' powerful Microsoft Corporation. Also basking in the multimedia sunlight are a variety of major computer companies, including recently downsized but still large IBM and Apple computers, more specialized computer manufacturers like Silicon Graphics, chip manufacturers such as Intel Corp, and a host of smaller but fast-charging companies with both domestic and international interests. Also taking a leading position on the new media stage is Microsoft, the dominant computer company, founded dominant computer software company founded by Bill Gates, who has recently turned his attention to writing a book on the information superhighway, and who was named the 1994 CEO of the Year by Chief Executive Magazine. Silicon Graphics Inc. merits special note as well. With its more than one billion in sales and 100 million in profits in 1993, headed by Chief Executive Edward R. McCracken, SGI is widely recognized for its state-of-the-art computer graphics and animation, as seen in the Dinosaurs of Jurassic Park, or the lifelike meeting of President John F. Kennedy and actor Tom Hanks in the 1994 blockbuster Forrest Gump. Consumer electronics companies play a major role as well, with international companies especially important, such as Dutch company Philips and Japanese company Sony. Video game player and game manufacturers, such as leading Japanese companies Nintendo and Sega, are also in the forefront. Developing multimedia products depends in large part on the nature of the marketplace. One leading market research firm, DataQuest, put the number of in-home multimedia PCs in the U.S. at just 1.98 million in 1992, up to 3.6 million in 93, and 4.5 million in 1994, and they estimate as many as 5.6 million by the end of 1995. Elsewhere in the world, growth of the installed multimedia base has been slower, but is reaching a critical mass as well. The next graph plots the growth of the installed base for the CD-ROM, using 1991 as the year of launch for the consumer CD-ROM. Notably, 
Diffusion started off somewhat slowly, but has accelerated rapidly the past two years. The market is primarily an American phenomenon, with some 80% of all devices located in the U.S. Inteco estimates that in the U.S., 60% of the installed base of multimedia devices are in the home, with the increasing percentage up to 75% by the end of 1996. This means analysts expect somewhat slower growth in the installed base outside the home, such as in schools and in the workplace. The marketing implication is that sales growth for multimedia products will likely be greatest in the home market, both in the U.S. and abroad. Since its invention in 1982, the CD-ROM has emerged as the medium of choice for not just storage of digital information, but as a multimedia delivery publishing system. CD-ROM publishing has grown so rapidly that it now even boasts its own annual CD-ROM exposition. The worldwide CD-ROM business is large and growing fast. In 1992, the number of installed CD-ROM readers was just 4 million worldwide across all hardware platforms, the desktop, the TV set-top, and portable computers. It reached 7 million by the end of 1993, an increase of 75% in just one year. With CD-ROM drive prices falling to as low as 199 US dollars, the installed base will continue to grow. One problem still plaguing the burgeoning industry is the continually evolving hardware and software standards, which have limited compatibility between systems, platforms, and disks. Likewise, there has been some debate about how big the industry really is, largely because of the difficulty in pinning down the exact number of titles and disks in circulation. One source, Infotech's 1992 Optical Publishing Industry Assessment, tallied for 94, nearly 7,000 CD-ROM titles, and 15 million disks, both commercial and in-house, and a $3 billion commercial CD-ROM publishing industry, all of which was growing at more than 40% annually. It's estimated that about one in five titles are multimedia, which could be text and images, and possibly audio and motion video. PC Magazine estimates that more than 4,500 CD-ROM titles were available in January 94. DataQuest estimates that 2.7 million CD-ROM disks were purchased in 93, up some 450% from the prior year's total of 700,000. Consumer electronics manufacturers are also convinced that CD-ROM is here to stay. Olaf Olafsson, president of Sony Electronic Publishing, believes CD-ROM has arrived as a mass market product and opened a new CD-ROM manufacturing plant in Eugene, Oregon, late last year. Producing multimedia for training and education is dependent on both hardware and software considerations. In the appendix of your print package, you'll find a figure illustrating key elements of a multimedia production platform. Although production systems are available for Windows and Macintosh computers, Macintosh platforms have been the most common. The basic building block of a, of a Macintosh multimedia production system is the Power Mac 8100 with a 66 megahertz chip. This processor provides enough speed and video processing power to manipulate digital video, audio, and text in a real-time environment. A Sony CD-ROM Recorder 900E is the central device for recording the digital multimedia content onto a CD-ROM. Importantly, the Sony Recorder can create CD-ROMs to run on either Mac or IBM workstations. Other peripheral devices are important for storage and processing along the way to the finished product. QuickTime is the central software product for creating digital movies to include in multimedia training and education products. Other software products provide specialized functions, including Premiere to edit QuickTime movies, Photoshop to edit still images, Claris Draw for creating graphics, and Alias 
for rendering computer animation. For the end user, either a Macintosh or IBM compatible multimedia workstation provides a useful platform for training or educational CD-ROM material. The central elements in either a Mac or IBM multimedia workstation are illustrated in the appendix of your participant manual. In addition, included are the elements to connect these workstations to a network. A network connection is especially important for multimedia training and education in order to facilitate interactivity in the education environment. Only through a networked communications environment can multiple users simultaneously experience and interact with a multimedia training and education product. A useful central processor for an IBM workstation is the Intel Pentium 90 with 16 megabytes of random access memory or RAM, 540 megabytes of read-only memory or ROM, and a CD-ROM drive. This is a fast machine with plenty of memory to handle the demands of multimedia training and educational products. A video card with at least one megabyte of memory is also important to facilitate fast processing of full motion video and computer animation. There's nothing as frustrating to a user as waiting for images to load and draw onto the screen, especially in a training session where decision-making simulations may require split-second timing. Often overlooked is a quality audio system. A sound card addresses this issue. In multimedia training, audio can be effectively used to reinforce visual cues, to draw attention in complex informational environments, to signal change, and to provide positive reinforcement for correct decisions. It also provides an additional mechanism for creativity in multimedia design. And without effective audio output, devices and end-user workstations, audio impact is reduced or even lost entirely. The basic approach to a Mac-based multimedia workstation is the same as with the IBM platform, a Power Mac 6100 with 66 megahertz processor is fast enough to handle the full motion video in real time. In both a Mac and an IBM, a high resolution color monitor is important to provide full impact of color images. To summarize this discussion, consider the following multimedia design considerations. The overall keys are quality, full interactivity, originality, and hypertext. Where production teams are concerned, production is interactive and iterative and interdisciplinary, including content experts, teacher, programmer, and project manager. Next, multimedia design documents. These follow no standard form or length, have no single ending, and cannot be completed until all technical details and problems are worked out. A multimedia product typically features 25 minutes of full motion video integrated into the rest of the computer-generated graphics, extensive dialogue, and hundreds of pages of computer programming. In multimedia, place and character are at least as important as narrative structure. And the player's actions drive story development. A multimedia user interface should provide fluidity of movement, interactivity, and an intuitive design. The altering of digital images in multimedia can achieve, be achieved through addition, subtraction, and manipulation. Central to all aspects of multimedia training and design is evaluating the results of any multimedia effort. Evaluation research is perhaps the most important and systematic of these mechanisms. 
Evaluation research comes in two primary forms, formative and summative research. Formative refers to pre-testing and diagnostic research designed to assess how effectively a new multimedia training product works, what can be done to improve its training effectiveness, and why it may have failed or, one hopes, succeeded. Summative refers to research done after a new multimedia product has been created in order to evaluate whether it succeeded and whether the product should be rolled out nationally or internationally. Both kinds of evaluation research are relevant to this discussion of the development of new multimedia products. A large and rapidly growing number of companies are engaged in research efforts to determine which new multimedia technologies are most likely to succeed in the education and training market. Unfortunately, if experience is any indicator, even the best research has little chance of reliably predicting or forecasting which technologies are likely to succeed and which are doomed to fail. Media critic and author Ken Oletta, whose widely acclaimed bestseller, Three Blind Mice, dissected the fall of the three great commercial television networks in the U.S. and the role of both economics and technology in that decline, notes a recent case study in failed technology predictions. In the late 1980s, Oletta observed, the best research suggested that HDTV, or high-definition television, was about to transform the TV landscape, making conventional TV obsolete. Since HDTV transmission would require much greater bandwidth than was available to most television stations, the entire broadcast TV market was terrified by the looming change. But no one foresaw the rapid entry of digital technologies and compression. Suddenly, HDTV was passe, Aletta says. New technology would make it possible to transmit HDTV using existing broadcast bandwidth. As a result, many companies will likely lose millions, if not billions, of dollars in investments in new media technologies, while a few companies will likely make a great deal of money. Telecommunications consultant John Kerry wisely observes that while few research techniques provide reliable forecasts of new multimedia products, field trials can provide other very useful data. Field trials may offer insights on a number of difficult questions confronting multimedia developers, such as content issues. What do people want? Will they watch or interact with existing content that is enhanced with interactive features? Will they prefer original but expensive to produce content? The relationship between the content providers and the viewers, will those new kinds of viewing habits evolve? The interactive multimedia interface, should the controls be in the remote, should the controls be in the remote control or on the screen? Should it use words or icons? Icons suggest a computer model and may often prove difficult for users to remember and understand. The interface metaphor for interactive TV. Many are testing physical or geographic metaphors, such as a mall or a street through which the viewer travels. This approach may be fun, but it's slow. The choice options. A tree and branching model works well in some contexts, but people tend to get lost. Computer options, such as Boolean searching, tend to be too complex. Some are trying out associations with everyday life, such as have been used at automated teller machines for banking. Use human tellers as their model, referring to the customer by name, telling them thank you and have a nice day. Entering alpha numeric data. Should these data be entered on screen, using the remote control or by voice command? On-screen help or instructions. Some believe the ideal system is totally intuitive, requiring no instructions and reflecting the fact that most people just sit down and start using new media devices. 
gender differences in using technology. Women often watch TV while doing something else, such as eating, reading, ironing, cooking, writing. And they do this much more often than do men. How will this behavior affect their use of multimedia? These are just some of the critical questions facing the developers of multimedia for training and education. The multimedia horizon beckons enticingly. Today's challenge is to create multimedia products that uniquely suit each training and educational setting and audience. Let's begin the first question and answer session. We will try to answer as many questions as possible. Therefore, we ask that only one question be asked per phone call and that these questions be as brief as possible. You may call the studio directly at the phone numbers or fax, which now appear on your screen. Our first call is from the Instituto Tecnologico de Morelia in Morelia, Michoacan. Welcome. What is your question? Yes, good morning. The multimedia products are focused on Intel uh, products and Mac computers. What can we see as regards Unix and RISC type of products? Well, uh, you're right. The majority are, in fact, uh, Intel and, uh, and Macintosh. However, uh, I've recently found out that there are many industries that are Unix-based here in the United States, some of the defense industries especially. And so they tend to have software that allows them to develop training in Unix. What those are, I'm not, what the actual software is, I'm not sure. But uh, it's good to know that that exists. Mm -hmm. Our next question is from the Instituto Tecnologico de Apatzingan in Apatzingan, Michoacan. Welcome. Your question, please. Yes, good morning. I'm calling from the Instituto Tecnológico Superior de Apatzingán, Mexico. The question is as follows. How important is it to promote multimedia application in education and why? Mm -hmm. I think it's important to promote multimedia in education, especially because if we're to see the field evolve and improve, in its development, I think most of the basic research as well as the research that helps to further our understanding of the effectiveness of multimedia, uh, that can be especially well done in education. And for the next generation of developers, I think that that can most effectively be uh, uh, done in education. But also, I think it's important to have a collaboration with the private sector. So if that promotion within education can be done in a way that, that brings in the private sector partners, I think we'll see a more rapid development and enhancement of multimedia education and training. Thank you. We have a call from Argentina, the Universidad Nacional de Córdoba. Welcome. Your question, please. Yes, thank you. We wanted to ask if you could indicate or give a specific example in the medical sector that would show the necessary follow-up to evaluate whether or not the educational objectives specified were reached. Thank you. Um, I believe the what you're asking what you're asking is um, how do you follow up uh, how do you follow up to know whether the objectives are uh, have been reached is that correct uh, the way to do that is to um, is to actually put the program out in the field uh, with the types of users you're you're interested in, in watching the program and uh, basically do a post test make sure that they watch the program and see how in fact they have how they've, uh, if they've learned what, what they've learned based on tests done after the multimedia program. Have you done that kind of testing uh, of your multimedia products? Is that the way you do it? Uh, yes, in fact, there's, you do testing uh, while you're in the programming stage so you can, you can fine tune the program. And then there's a part of testing called usability where you actually test how the user uses the program itself. And then once you've worked all 
all those tests and know that it, it runs well and it works well with the person, then you've got a good solid product. We have a, a follow-up question on that uh, by fax from Key TV in Sao Paulo, Brazil, which asks the general question, how do you make sure that a multimedia program is effective in this or, or other means? One of the things that you need to do is outline specifically your objectives for what you hope to achieve with that multimedia training. And so you need to know what learning is to be a, a achieved through that process. And one very good example of a, of a product in the medical field that was, that's been developed and has been tested in this way would be worth taking a look at is called Adam. Adam provides an entire body of, of, of a human in multidimensional uh, space that enables medical school students to explore the entire human anatomy in three dimensions, to, to, to go through the skin, perform surgery, move at all levels of the human body. And they began by doing the lower torso uh, of, of the human body, and they've since moved up through the rest. And I think they're just reaching the top now. They haven't quite finished the, uh, the three dimensions of, of the mind. But this product, Adam, is a particularly good one that I would encourage people perhaps to take a look at. It's an award-winning program and, and, and worth uh, looking at from this point of view of educational effectiveness. We have a call from uh, our neighbor in Tijuana, the Universidad Iberoamericana, Campus Noreste, in Tijuana, Baja. Welcome. Your question, please. What possibilities do we in developing countries have to use or develop multimedia as regards costs? Very good question. Definitely. There's. Um, the development of low-end, low com low-price computers and the type of software and hardware that's now out there allows uh, many people to now get involved with multimedia. And it's important to know that you don't have to produce uh, a high-end, you know, real fancy product um, with fancy equipment. You can use uh, the basics, you know, basic computers that uh, that are out there now in order to. Um, put together a good solid program and as Dr. Pavlik had mentioned as long as you've got the good solid ob objectives and good s uh, solid uh, instructional design in the program you don't need a lot of whistles and bells in order to produce a good program. And I assume that typically the costs have been coming down on the kinds of hardware that you need for multimedia production. Is that true? That's true. John? Absolutely. The price has been falling according to what uh, uh, one-time chairman of the Intel Corp, Gordon, Mil Gord uh, Gordon Moore, called uh, what now people call Moore's Law, where the price of computing and the power of computing are inversely related so that the, the price is falling dramatically, the power is rising dramatically. What you now have in a portable computer is, is, is more computing power than you had 30 years ago in a, in a whole building-sized uh, uh, of computer. So we'll soon see computers in the next generation that will be in uh, video game players uh, in next year's uh, cycle of, of, of computer game players that will be more powerful in terms of processing video than uh, many of the most powerful computers of, of, of today's fastest desktop uh, computers. And they'll be in a price of two or three hundred dollars. And this next generation now has built in access to uh, the internet and the world wide web and as multimedia migrate uh, to that environment, we'll see on-ramps to multimedia in, in an online environment that may only cost a few hundred dollars. So that's really just around the corner. We have a call now from Panama, the Universidad Tecnológica de Panama. Welcome. Your question, please. My question is, por favor, aléjense del monitor. Por favor, aléjense del monitor. Algo más. Specifically, know a little bit more about informational systems and the use of the